Okay, welcome back guys. Uh, in this lesson we're going to go through and start adding our rocks. So again, if we take a look at what we have out here, we have our spaceship, the player, he can move around with the arrow keys, the AWSD keys, pressing the space bar, he can fire his lasers. We got the enemy shooting and shooting at us. We've gone through, added to the score, playing with the player's health and lives. And if he loses all, all of his lives, he will go to a game over scene. So with that, let's go ahead and end this. And talk about bringing out our rocks. So going into the library, we have our rocks out here. We have already exported them out for linkage to give them a name. If we double click on our rocks, you can see we have just one rock setting out here. In our actions frame, we have a stop command. I went through and broke it apart in pieces just to do a frame by frame animation. Out here in the last frame, Another way that we can take our items off of the stage so they're not visible is just saying this, referring to this movie clip, dot x, what is its x property, equals negative 200. So when this rocket's destroyed, it will move off the stage into a negative 200. So this is just another way that you could go through and move these off the stage. Or again, we could come back in here and move them off the stage through code as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get into our coding so we can add these in. And with this, I'm going to add these towards the top because I don't want them to be in the way of anything else. So just before my player lasers or player bullets, I'm going to add these in. So first we need to go through and set up a variable. How many rocks do we want? So rock num. This is just going to be a number. And I'm going to bring out about four different rocks. Let's create another variable for hit rock. So when I do hit that rock, what do you want to happen? Well, this needs to be an array since we have multiple rocks. And it's going to equal a new array. Next, we don't want all of our rocks to come out at the same time, so we're going to create another variable. Next rock, we're going to set this up as an integer or int, int. This is going to equal a math dot random. And how long do we want this to be in between rocks? So I'm going to times this by about 2,000, so two seconds worth. Now the variable, we could do rock speed. And again, this is going to be array since we have multiple rocks, and it's going to equal a new array. And this way we could go through, and every rock that comes out can have a different speed that we set up. Next, to bring out the rocks, we're, again, we're going to use a for loop. We're going to do the variable r, which is a number equal to 0, semicolon. And as long as r is less than our rock num, semicolon, r plus plus. So with that, uh, we're going to create a variable inside here called rock temp. And this is going to be a movie clip. And it's going to equal our new rock. Then we need to go through this square bracket, double quote, rock in that double quote 
plus r in that square bracket. It's going to equal our rock temp. Let's go ahead and place this somewhere on the stage. So I'm going to just copy this part, this rock, and go right after it and say dot x to look at its x property. So equal to negative 200. This rock dot y is also going to equal a negative 200. Again, this is just moving it off the stage. Then we need our add child for this rock to put it somewhere out on the stage. So if we test this, let's go ahead and move this down so we can expand it out and see where our rock is located. You see it setting right up here next to our ships. Okay. So with that, let's go down and we are also going to start adding our power-ups inside here. So I'm going to go through and let's create some variables. And this is going to be a random power. And I'm just going to make this equal to a number. We're not going to set the value of that. We'll set that later on. Okay. Now with this, we also need a variable for our ship power time. Okay. This is going to go through be a number, and we're going to make this equal to about 2,000 as well. And this is going to go through and be the ship power timer that will go through and allow us to retain that power. Okay. And we'll probably change this after a while. Next, we need a variable for our power timer. Again, this is going to be a number, and I'm going to make this equal to about 5,000. This number here is when a power-up comes up on the stage, how long do you want it to last? So if the player doesn't get there in time before it leaves the stage and goes back off. Okay, next we need another variable for our power-up num. How many power-ups do we want to bring onto the stage? Okay, and again, um, we could do this in several different ways. I'm going to create this as an int, int, and how many power-ups do we have? Do not have more power-ups than you have rocks or whatever you destroy to get that power-up. So if your ships are giving out power-ups, you know, don't have any more than the number of ships. I'm using the rocks, so I have four rocks. That means I could only have four different power-ups out there. I can't have five or six power-ups when I only have four rocks. Now I could definitely have less, but just not more. Okay. And then our last variable, times up, that means the times up on our ship. And this is actually going to be a boolean. So, or a boolean, however you want to pronounce that. And that is going to equal false to start with. Okay. Next, we need to come in and start setting up our for loop, so for variable pu for power up. That's going to be a number equal to zero. And our pu is less than our pu num, and then pu 
plus plus. And just like before, we're going to create another variable, power temp. And this is going to be a movie clip. And this is going to equal our new power up. And again, our new power up is coming from the library. And we have already gone through and exported that one out as well. So, again, this square brackets, I'm just going to call this power plus PU is going to equal our power temp. And let's go ahead and copy this. And let's place it off the stage. And I'm just going to give this one a negative 100 on the X. I'm not going to worry about the Y at this point. And let's do the add child. So this should be placed out on the stage as well. So now if we check this, let's go ahead and scroll back. We can see it setting right up here at the top. And I might even move it back just a little bit further. So let's take that to a negative 200. And we need to add that equal sign in there. That way it gets moved off the stage. So there we go, way back here off to the stage so it can't be seen. Okay, next, we need to go in and scroll down into our game loop. And right up here at the top, just after our move E bullet, we're going to create move rock. This is going to be a function that we're going to call. And then our power up collision is another function that we're going to need to call. And let's go ahead and scroll down into our areas. And I'm going to kind of put these down towards the bottom just before my watch keys. And let's create our function for our move rock. And we want void because we're not going to return anything from this. And start going through and setting up this up. Now again, going through with this, we have several different rocks. So again, we need that for loop. So variable MR for move rock. This is going to be a number equal to zero. And as long as MR is less than our rock num, MR plus plus. So first thing that we need to check inside here is if on a condition next rock is less than time. So as long as next rock is less than time, we want to make sure we can bring that rock out. So then we need to check if this rock plus MR Again, within square brackets, dot x, looking at its x value, is less than a negative 150. So it depends on where we placed it on the stage. Remember, on our rock, we did a negative 200 on the x and y. 
that means it's setting off the stage it's not on the stage already another thing is if you're going through and getting confused with all these closing brackets again you could go right after them and add comments so closed and basically what we can do is just come up and copy these lines so we closed that let's go ahead and copy this add a comment in here closed this let's do the comment closed for loop and on our last one closed our function that way you don't get confused as to which closing bracket goes along with which opening bracket so now to check this if it's setting off the stage we need to go through and set our rock speed since our rock speed is an array we need the square brackets and it's going to be MR because we're within that for loop and this is going to equal math dot random and let's times that about 10 okay and actually I'm going to do 8 plus 2 is what it's going to do is math random is going to generate a number between 0 and 1 if it's 0 we don't want it just sitting there so I want it to move out you know a little bit so have a minimum speed of 2 max speed of 10 next we need to set up our next rock that's going to equal the time plus parenthesis math dot random and again times I'm going to give this one about five seconds and we need to close our parenthesis up here so let's not forget that okay and then we also need to set our hit rock so what is the state of our hit rock again that's an array so we need the square brackets we're going to make that equal to false so we haven't hit it yet but there's always that possibility then we need to say this rock plus MR dot Y is going to equal math dot floor math dot random and we need to set it off on the side of the stage again we don't want it up in the HUD we don't want it right at the edge of the stage so we're going to times this by 450 plus 100 so the minimum number again is going to be 100 the max number is going to be 550 so that way it's going to keep it on the stage it's not going to be up into the HUD of our game and get to an area where the ship is not going to be able to hit it then we need to set it off on the right hand side of the stage so that's going on our y-axis top to bottom then we need to go through and set it up on the left or right hand side so I'm just going to copy this I'm going to change this to X I'm going to make that equal about 850 let's go 825 okay let's go ahead and get rid of this blank line out here now going right after this so this is where this can get confusing so make sure you put these comments in 
So I'm going after the next rock time. Okay. So we already know if we need a rock out there or not. Okay. So we're going to set up another condition. If this rock plus MR dot X is greater than a negative 150, that means we brought it onto the stage. What do we want to do? Well, we want it to start moving down across the stage. So I'm just going to copy this instead of typing this out over and over again. So I want my dot x to minus equal our rock speed mr. So we previ previously set that up. Okay. And I'm also going to take this. What happens with, you know, asteroids and stuff? They kind of rotate as they're going around. So let's set up the rotation to make this spin and do a plus equal three. So that's going to allow it to spin around and turn on us. Else, what do we want to happen? Well, I want this rock dot x to equal a negative 200. Move it off the stage. So if it's not somewhere on the stage, go ahead and move it off. OK. So that means it has probably gone from one end to the other. You haven't hit it. OK. This is basically the same thing that we did in the movie clip but this is checking to see if we didn't shoot it we still need it to move off the stage so it doesn't continue just running way down out of nowhere all right coming after this staying within the for loop so we're still within this for loop here we're going to create another for loop so for variable, I'm going to call this dr destroy rock. Okay, and this is going to be a number equal to zero. And as long as my dr is less than our bullet number. So now we're dealing with our bullets. So just like we did up here, you know, we're dealing with our bullet numbers. So if our player shoots at this, this is where we're going to go through and do that hit detection. Then we're going to say if this rock.mr does the hit test object against this in square brackets bullet plus dr within square brackets close that first parenthesis and double ampersand our hit rock mr equals false what do we want to do we want our hit rock mr to equal true we only want this to occur one time so we know we have a bullet that has hit the rock so our hit rock is equal to false. So we want it to set to true. So we don't want this to have several bullets hitting it. We only want this to occur one time. I'm going to tell this rock dot go to and play 
And what do we want it to go to and play? Well, we want it to go to and play destroy. Now, we really don't need this. We could just tell this to play. But maybe you have some other things that you want to set up with your rocks or your asteroids. Maybe go through different types of explosions, things like that. Um, maybe you already have your animation set up on a frame by frame inside the movie clip. So there's a lot of different ways that we could do this. So I always like to use go to and play on a label name. Remember we got that label name destroy inside that movie clip. So it's always best just to say instead of play go to that label name. So because if you go through and add stuff to that movie clip previous to it and you just say play it's going to play all of that as well. Okay. Let's go through and add to our score. So score plus equal 5. Every time we shoot a rock, let's go through and add 5 points to our score. Okay. Next, I'm just going to put a comment in here. We're going to say deal with power-ups. So this part is going to start dealing with our power-ups. So random power is going to equal our math.floor. math dot random and let's do times 10 so we have a 1 in 10 chance right now that every time we shoot a rock that something could happen I'm gonna narrow that down so I'm gonna say if my random power is greater than 3 and my random power is less than 7. So that's going to give me 4, 5, or 6. You could also go through and say ran if random power equals 3 and random power equals 6 and random power equals 9 and this is just setting ranges or hard coding values that is going to allow us so right now I'm using 4, 5, and 6 so if it's greater than 3 and less than 7 well that gives me 4, 5, or 6 so I'm setting a range to when I want these power ups to show Okay, so open, closing, curly brackets. And then we need to check to see if this square brackets power plus mr dot x is less than negative 150 because we set that to a negative 200. So if it's setting off the stage, I'm going to set my power time. Power timer is going to equal 5,000. My power timer is also going to equal our time plus that power timer and we're going to say this and I'm just going to copy this up here again just to make sure I keep everything the same power timer dot x is going to equal this rock plus mr dot x. We want it to show up at the same position as our rock is. 
Okay, so I'm just going to copy this line. Let's go right after it and change X to Y. So that way they will show up exactly at the same spot. I'm going to go after two curly braces. Is that's dealing with these four loops. Okay, remember we're still doing that hit test. So I need to tell this bullet plus dr dot x to equal a negative 100. And don't forget our aim x dot dr needs to equal 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of that one. All right, we got one more function running a little bit long, but we can finish this out here. So our next function, so that ends our function for our rocks. So they're moving out on stage. We're checking to see if we're hitting them. If we're hitting them, we're checking to see if we need to bring a power up out or not. So next we have our function. And we're going to call this the power up collision, just like we had before. Again, void, we're not going to return anything from this. And we're going to do our for loop. So for variable PUC, power up collision. This is going to be a number equal to zero. And then as long as our power up collision is less than our PU num, PU C plus plus. And then if our power timer is less than time. We're checking to see how long has this power up been on the stage. So if it's been on stage long enough, we're going to take this power plus PUC dot X. Let's make it equal a negative 100. Okay, that's the end of that one. Let's go after this curly brace. Again, you might want to go through and comment your curly braces. Then, if our ship does the hit test, object against this power up. So let's go ahead and copy this. Two closing curly or parentheses. We're going to tell our ship power timer to equal 10,000. It's going to give us 10 seconds for our shields to turn on. And then we're going to tell our times up. times up to equal true. Our ship power timer is going to equal time plus our ship power timer. We're going to tell our ship to go to and stop on the shields. And then we're going to tell this power up dot x to equal a negative 100, actually a negative 200.
Okay, so we end that. We end the for loop. And just before the closing of the function, but after the for loop, we're going to check if our ship power timer is less than time and our time's up equals true we're going to tell our ship to go to and stop on the good and we're going to take our times up make that equal to false so let's make sure that we need times up yeah let's see was there another one let's make sure just coming up to the top here that we did call that times up Time's up. Let's check our syntax, make sure nothing's going on. Let's go ahead and test this. So you can see we got some rocks out here now. Let's see, we got some going at different speeds. Some are going faster. Some are going small, uh, slower. Let's see if we can get our power up to show up here. Again, this is all based off of random numbers. Okay. Sometimes it can take a while for one to show up. We might go through if we can't get one to show up here. It's hard code it just to make sure that we're not getting any logic errors. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and hard code something in here. Just for testing purposes. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, let's see, there's our move rock. And we're going to come in and this is for testing only we're going to say our random power equals 5 so that way when we go through and test this we should be getting power ups out here and we are not so let's go through and check our code Okay, so let's go ahead and check this, and let's see. Go ahead and test this real quick. Let's go ahead and move that guy back down so we can see it. Okay. And let's make sure that everything's set right, our power up. If it's negative, then 150. Let's make sure that up at the top, Our power up, we're setting at a negative 200. Okay, let's come back down. Move rock. Hit test. To our random power equals five, so it always comes out. Okay, we pick that up, get some more brought out. Okay, we should be getting them out all the time, so they're not coming out. So if we scroll down into our power-up collision, we need this to negative 200, not 100. 
that's a negative 200 that should be good let's test this again see if we can grab that guy go ahead and touch him okay there's our power-ups coming out all the time you can see our shields are on when we have shields on our health does not go down as fast okay so that's good let's come up and let's go ahead and just comment that line out again and we're gonna call this one finished so in our next lesson we're gonna go through and add some stars to the background and we'll probably even have time to go through and clean up everything and so when we die or game is over that we remove everything from the stage except maybe the ship so we'll see you guys in the next one